this time we will be talking about biodiversity and threats to biodiversity. So first of all, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity is diversity of life. From Greek, bios means life. So um, it's uh, the variety of life. And uh, to be more specific, the variety of species, the variety of uh, genes, genotypes, genetic variability, and uh, the variety of uh, ecosystems. We will be talking about threats to biodiversity. And while talking about threats to biodiversity, we cannot uh, avoid uh, the last uh, event uh, or, well, the last disaster, which was uh, uh, burning the national park of Biebrza. So the Biebrza National Park, uh, it's uh, is a natural park with uh, meadows, forests and nesting places for birds and uh, on Sunday 19th of April 2020 it, uh, mm, uh, it was set on fire and now we know that the fire was uh, uh, was due to human fault so but uh, we don't know whether it was deliberate whether it was arson or whether it was uh, accidental um, due to for example burning grasses burning grasses is a um, custom or well the habit which is uh, still uh, which still occurs in Poland, although it uh, has been forbidden for several years now. So the cause was uh, humans, but uh, the fact that uh, this fire was uh, on such a big scale was due to the weather, due to the um, drought, which is now uh, in Poland. The fire was uh, put out on 26th uh, of April, so that means that it took one week to put the fire out. In total, 5,300, so more than 1,000 hectares, were destroyed, were uh, burnt, and uh, the habitats destroyed include uh, meadows, uh, forests, uh, reeds, and unfortunately many nesting places uh, were destroyed because it's uh, nesting season, breeding season for birds, uh, and also many birds uh, died. So this, this is a big loss uh, and uh, fortunately this is not the threat to the whole species and hopefully next year nature will regenerate and uh, the Biebrza uh, National Park will, um, will be restored. But uh, it is not always like that. In many cases, uh, we have destruction of species, destruction of habitats, and this is irreversible. When we talk about extinction, we usually think about uh, organisms like dinosaurs, which went extinct long time before 
humans appeared on Earth. But uh, extinction refers also to animals which uh, used to live in historic times, but uh, they went extinct. They went extinct uh, due to humans. In any case, uh, extinction can be caused uh, by uh, two factors. Uh, one is, uh, broadly speaking, it would be change in environment. So the environment, uh, the climate, or any other environmental aspects change, and uh, the organisms cannot adjust to this new environment. That's why they, uh, when they go extinct, they die out. Uh, another case uh, of uh, uh, causing extinction of animals is uh, when uh, they are directly exterminated by humans, when they are hunted or they are um, exterminated because they are regarded to be pests. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, the cause is uh, directly human. In case of environmental changes, also in many cases, humans are to blame, but uh, that's an indirect. I said that uh, there are two causes, two major causes, or two groups of causes of extinction of species, but uh, I can add also third group of causes, uh, which is uh, introduction of new species. Obviously, that's uh, quite uh, paradoxical though, that uh, introduction of new species can be the cause of uh, the loss of biodiversity. But in fact, new species can transform the environment so that the environment uh, is not uh, good for the species which uh, live on that, uh, that area. Or new species can also be um, direct cause for the extinction of uh, local species. It can go through competition with local species and it can also be direct uh, hunting on local species. Uh, it's not an accident that the illustration for that uh, are cats, because cats uh, introduced uh, into Australia or New Zealand, especially New Zealand, caused the extinction of uh, many local species of birds. And even in Poland, cats can be uh, harmful to the bird population. That's why it is important to uh, protect the birds from cats, and it can be through such a device as shown in the picture, uh, preventing cats from climbing the trees and getting the nests of birds. According to IUCN, there are several categories of species depending on the level they are threatened. It refers to the species. And uh, the first category, obviously, there are species which are extinct. So, uh, species can be uh, extinct uh, completely. So, obviously, in that case, they are lost forever. And the species can be extinct in the wild, which means that uh, they can be preserved in 
zoological gardens or in case of plants uh, botanical gardens uh, but they are not extinct uh, completely and uh, another category of uh, species are species which are threatened and uh, there are um, species which are critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable. And uh, there is the category of uh, lower risk. And uh, this category includes uh, species which are near threatened, also species which are conservation dependent, and species which are least concerned. This category of least concern can be misleading because that doesn't mean that these species should not be looked after. And many of these species, like for example, white stork, are included into, uh, for example, uh, the European Union bird directive, so directive which is about protection of uh, birds. And uh, why species become extinct? We know that it can be direct threat or indirect threat. Uh, and uh, I will give you now some examples of uh, extinction. Our first example is uh, Steller's uh, sea cow. This uh, was a species, uh, um, it was a mammal, uh, then the, the order was uh, Sirenia. And uh, the mm, closest relatives uh, to this species uh, living nowadays are dugongs. And uh, this was discovered in mid-18th century and uh, it is worth noticing that it went extinct only 27 years after its discovery. The cause uh, of extinction was uh, overhunting. And uh, it was uh, hunted because of uh, meat, because of fat, and uh, overhunting caused the, the extinction. And it lived uh, around the uh, Commander Islands uh, in the Bering Sea, which is between Alaska and Russia. So the range was uh, very small and small range is often something that uh, makes extinction much uh, more likely. Another example of an animal with uh, very limited range was, uh, and which went extinct, was uh, the Falkland Islands uh, wolf or the Falkland Islands uh, uh, fox wolf or another name was uh, Wora. And uh, as uh, I said, this uh, uh, animal, uh, it was from the um, order of uh, carnivores, carnivora, and uh, the family of uh, dogs, dog family, and uh, this uh, animal uh, fed on penguins. But the residents of the Falkland Islands thought that uh, the fox wolf hunted on sheep, as uh, usually wolves are uh, suspected of uh, hunting on sheep, which is uh, sometimes true, and uh, in many cases it is not true. In that, this case it was not true, and uh, often uh, when sheep are killed by um, some animals, uh, 
usually these are stray dogs and people think and in that case also thought that these were wolves. It was also hunted because of its uh, fur and uh, unfortunately it went extinct. Its extinction was uh, predicted by Charles Darwin when he um, had his uh, voyage around the uh, world. So um, he predicted the extinction. Here you have uh, some other examples of animals which uh, went extinct and which had very limited geographical range. But in some cases, even very numerous uh, populations and uh, populations with uh, very wide range uh, can get extinct and the whole species can get extinct this way. And uh, this is the case of the passenger pigeon. Uh, this uh, um, species lived in North America and uh, the last individual died in the zoo. It was uh, 1914 and the last uh, uh, individual uh, on large uh, died uh, earlier. In mid-19th century, these species w was very numerous and uh, even counted in billions. Uh, but uh, in 1870s, it already became rare and there were attempts to protect this uh, species uh, to limit hunting but these attempts were futile. The cause of extinction is not clear. Uh, obviously, overhunting uh, was important, but uh, probably also the change of the environment because uh, the trees growing on the prairies uh, were cut down, so uh, the groups of large trees and they nested on large trees in the middle of the prairies and when the changes in agriculture took place these trees were cut down so maybe that was also the cause of extinction or one of the causes of extinction. One should mention that it is always uh, difficult to say about the causes of extinction and it is very rarely that there is one cause of extinction. Usually there is a combination of different factors. And now the example from Poland. Aurochs or Oryx uh, was the ancestor of uh, domestic cattle. Uh, it has uh, also quite a big range, but uh, cutting down forests uh, limited uh, the uh, range of uh, this uh, animal. And also the problem was uh, that it was overhunting. So uh, the oryx uh, became rarer and rarer. But the longest uh, time it uh, survived uh, was in Poland. The last uh, individual uh, died uh, at the beginning of 17th century. The last individual, it was a female, died in 1627 in the Yaktorów forest. Is it possible to bring back the extinct species? In most cases, uh, as I said before, 
when the species is lost, it's lost forever and uh, it can't be restored. Nevertheless, in some cases, so-called de-extinction is possible. And de-extinction can be made uh, without uh, sophisticated uh, technology, so so-called low-tech, or with the use of uh, more sophisticated technologies like uh, reconstruction based on DNA, the remaining DNA, or in case of more recently extinct species where the whole cells uh, were preserved, it can be even cloning. In the case of uh, the oryx, low-tech uh, is possible and uh, it uh, has been done by the Heck brothers uh, who tried uh, to uh, breed uh, primitive uh, breeds of cattle and this way they obtained cattle with uh, the features uh, similar to aurochs. Nevertheless, it was uh, smaller, so the success was only partial. And nowadays, uh, there is attempt to do similar thing, just with different species, or, sorry, with different uh, varieties uh, of uh, cattle, of domestic cattle. And uh, also the attempt uh, is uh, being made with the DNA. The DNA of uh, uh, aurochs was uh, identified and uh, it is possible to supplement uh, the genetic code of uh, the cattle with uh, the uh, DNA of aurochs and uh, then in this case uh, the reconstruction of aurochs would be possible. Trait uh, selection was also applied in the reconstruction of another extinct species. It was uh, Quaha. Quaha is uh, the subspecies of the plain zebra and because it was subspecies it was possible to select plain zebras in the way that they have less and less stripes so basically just one uh, selection, uh, one-way selection was uh, applied, just one trait was taken. Nevertheless, uh, it was a success because uh, there are zebras with smaller number of uh, stripes, similar to quaha. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we don't know about other features of quaha, so it is just uh, selection uh, which uh, can produce uh, similar individuals but we don't know if it's real quaha. Similar selection based on physical characteristics was uh, made in case of uh, another species of uh, horse uh, and it was uh, so-called tarpon and uh, the uh, one of the breed of horses uh, is called uh, konik polski and uh, in english it's also um, it, the polish name is used konik simply konik is the name of this uh, uh, breed of horses and it is very similar to the wild horse which uh, uh, which went extinct uh, 
in the 19th century. Nevertheless, uh, there were some hybrids between um, the wild horse and uh, the domestic horse. The technology based on the introduction of uh, DNA into the species which uh, still exist or the attempt uh, of uh, cloning. This is mainly still in theory and uh, the closest uh, attempt uh, of cloning, the closest to the success, was uh, cloning the Pyrenean ibex, but uh, mm, it was from the female, recently died female, and it was at the beginning of 21st century, and uh, mm, the, the uh, newborn mm, goat which was born uh, unfortunately did not survive. It survived only several minutes and uh, it died of uh, respiration problems, uh, but uh, mm, it was shown that it is still possible to um, clone mm, uh, animals, uh, mm, to clone even species which uh, went extinct. But the question appears whether uh, we should work on the restoration of uh, the extinct species uh, or maybe we should focus on the protection of the existing species which are endangered, which are close to extinction and uh, we should prevent from extinction these populations. A good example of uh, the protection of a species which was uh, critically endangered or, or even extinct in the wild is the story of uh, the European bison. Another name is uh, Visant or Wizant, the English pronunciation can be either original German pronunciation Wizant or uh, Wizant. So um, both are uh, correct. Uh, and uh, uh, this species was extinct in the wild in 1921. In 1923, uh, there was a decision to try to restore the species from the individuals which uh, lived in zoological gardens uh, all over the world. And there were 54 such individuals uh, in various uh, zoological gardens, but uh, not all uh, could uh, reproduce, so only 12 individuals were selected and uh, taken uh, to reproduction. And uh, first, uh, bisons, European bisons, uh, were released into the wild, into the Białowieża forest uh, in 1929. And uh, in 1939, there were 16 animals which survived the Second World War. And nowadays, uh, this species is uh, quite numerous and it uh, was uh, 
shifted from the category of, uh, at first it was extinct in the wild, then it was uh, critically endangered and then endangered, and now it's only vulnerable species. So it is the lowest category among threatened species. These uh, uh, movies uh, is from the uh, Niepołomice uh, the center of uh, your, the European bison reproduction. Uh, this is the reproduction center and uh, the animals live there in semi-natural conditions and uh, they can be released into the forest, uh, not in the Niepołomice forest, there are no wild uh, uh, visits in the Niepołomice forest, but they can be uh, released, for example, in the Białowieża forest or other uh, big forest where, uh, for example, the Knishin forest or so on. So they uh, they can be released into the wild. The best way to protect a species is to protect the whole ecosystem. That is a pretty obvious thing, but it is not always uh, the case. Sometimes it happens that uh, populations uh, which are in nature are doing much worse than the artificial populations of the same species. The example of such population can be Barbary macaques or uh, Barbary apes or maggots. This name uh, Barbary ape is confusing because it's not really ape. Apes are uh, these uh, human-like uh, monkeys. Uh, monkeys are those uh, usually smaller with uh, usually with tails and the Barbary macaques uh, have no tails uh, so they are called apes but in fact, they are related to monkeys, but they are never refer referred as monkeys. So let's call them Barbary macaques. And uh, they live in North Africa, in uh, Morocco and Algeria, in the Atlas Mountains. And there is a population in the Rock of Gibraltar. And this population um, in Gibraltar is the only European population of monkeys, um, semi-wild population, but uh, it is probably introduced by humans. It was introduced by Moors, probably. And uh, this uh, population uh, living partially in the city is... Uh, increasing, or at least it's stable. Nowadays, uh, they control this population, so it is stable if, uh, but uh, with uh, the trend to increase. But the populations in nature in North Africa are declining. So that's why it is registered as uh, endangered uh, species. Barbary macaques are connected with the great politics because there is a legend that as long as uh, macaques are in the rock of Gibraltar the British will be there and uh, as you know Gibraltar is uh, a British uh, enclave on the Iberian Peninsula and uh, during the Second World War, there was a problem because only seven macaques remained and there was a real uh, danger, or at least uh, um, that was uh, reasonable to fear that uh, Gibraltar would be attacked. Uh, and uh, 
may be lost. It didn't happen, but uh, Winston Churchill was afraid about the morale of uh, the people of Gibraltar, so um, he personally ordered to bring more macaques from uh, Morocco. And uh, finally, the number reached 24. As, and now, as you know, the population uh, multiplied and now the population is uh, more than 200. What does it mean from the genetic point of view? It means that the population of Gibraltar has the features of the population of Morocco and also Algeria because uh, earlier some macaques were brought from Algeria as well. So we don't know about the origin um, of the population of Gibraltar because it has no specific features uh, because in fact uh, the ancestors uh, of the present macaques might be quite uh, recent. But uh, uh, something you should remember is that in this case humans uh, helped uh, the endangered species to live uh, and to uh, develop in uh, in semi-natural environment. Nowadays the problem is that they are going to the city and they are sometimes making mess in the city. Uh, so the idea is to um, keep them out of the city and uh, um, not to feed them, uh, not to feed them by tourists, uh, and uh, make them stay wild. As I told you before, although the best way to preserve uh, endangered species is uh, to keep them in natural environment, to protect their natural environment, but uh, nevertheless, uh, even completely artificial environment, not just semi-natural, but completely artificial environments like zoological gardens or botanical gardens uh, can help uh, uh, in preventing from the extinction of uh, animal and uh, plant species. We haven't uh, been talking much about uh, the extinction of uh, plants, but the mechanisms of a plant extinction are similar to the mechanisms of animal extinction. So the rule is that uh, over-exploitation is important. So in case of over-exploitation of plants, uh, we um, can make them extinct. The plants which are likely to be extinct are the plants with the limited range. So endemic plants occurring in very small uh, location. So not numerous. A particularly notorious example in plant extinction is the island of St. Helena. It is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and uh, due to the far distance from the mainland it is very rich uh, in endemic species. But unfortunately, many of these endemic species uh, went extinct. And I will give you just one example, which is uh, St. Helena olive. And uh, 
This was uh, just called olive, but it was unrelated uh, to the um, Mediterranean olive tree. But uh, it was uh, it was also a tree, and uh, it uh, grew in the uh, mountains, uh, and uh, it was discovered uh, in 1977. Uh, and uh, it uh, went extinct in the wild in 1994 and uh, in 2003 the last uh, individuals uh, died in the uh, cultivated environment. The cultivated individuals also died. Um, and the cause uh, of extinction was uh, uh, deforestation, but uh, also the fact that they weren't able to self-fertilize uh, and uh, the cultivation was uh, difficult because uh, in most cases, when plants, even if they are extinct in the wild, they can still grow in uh, artificial environment, in botanical gardens or simply in, in gardens. But in this case, it was difficult to grow this. And the further problem were pests and fungal infections, and they attacked the seeds and uh, unfortunately these uh, plants uh, went extinct. Fortunately in Europe we don't have many cases of extinct plants but uh, even though we have uh, uh, in France we have the case of uh, cry um, violet which uh, the name Cry comes from the uh, community of Cry. It was uh, a flower uh, which was uh, first discovered in 1860 and uh, it grew on the limestone hills uh, in the area of Cry. And uh, in 1927 it was uh, last spotted and uh, in the gardens uh, some individuals uh, survived uh, by 1950 but uh, now this species is uh, extinct. In this case most likely cause of extinction was uh, plant collection by botanists which uh, is uh, quite ironical. The last extinct plant I want to present you was uh, a very mysterious plant because we don't know much about this. We know that it was very important uh, for Egyptians, uh, for Minoan civilization, and also for Romans. And we know that it was from a piesa family, so the same family as celery, carrot, uh, fennel. Actually, it looked like uh, a huge fennel, but uh, we don't know more about this. The Latin name of this plant was uh, Silphium. Nowadays the name Silphium is used uh, to a totally different plant from different family, uh, but uh, it was uh, Latin name used for the this plant. Another name was uh, Silphion. The English name is Laserwort or Laser. It, uh, the word laser is connected with the uh, resin, which uh, 
was uh, the most valuable product of this plant and this plant was uh, very expensive and it was uh, an essential item of trade from ancient North African city of Cyrene. Cyrene was uh, a Roman uh, uh, in a Roman uh, province in North Africa and uh, nowadays it's uh, in Libya. And uh, it was considered to be very valuable um, medicine and uh, it was believed to treat many diseases and uh, also it was regarded uh, contraceptive and also perfume aphrodisiac as well so it had many ways of using this plant. And why did it become extinct? Uh, the most likely cause was uh, over farming, over grazing, just over exploitation. But uh, another possibility is uh, the change of climate. The climate became drier and maybe that was the cause uh, why this plant died out. Um, well, it's, uh, maybe it's worth, um, worth mentioning now because I haven't mentioned that before that uh, it is rarely that it is one factor, just you should remember that, that it is rarely that uh, only one factor is uh, responsible. So um, maybe it was both over exploitation, but also uh, climate change. When we talk about uh, useful plants, uh, we uh, must not forget about uh, the variety of cultivated plants and uh, biodiversity should refer not only to organisms uh, living in the wild but also to cultivated plants and domesticated animals and the trend uh, in the world uh, was that the number of uh, plants and animals uh, used uh, by humans uh, was uh, decreasing. And uh, now there is a trend, uh, um, there is the attempt to revert this trend and now local, less known varieties of uh, plants, like various uh, varieties of wheat, for example, or also various uh, varieties uh, of uh, um, domestic uh, animals, farm animals, uh, are more and more appreciated and uh, because they have some properties which can be used by humans and for example some of them can be more resistant to diseases. The trend in 70s, 80s was to produce animals, plants, uh, which uh, give, for example, cows, which give more and more milk, uh, wheat, which gives uh, more and more grain. But uh, people thought about the quantity um, and uh, they forgot about the quality. And now 
old forgotten breeds are um, coming back. And what do you think? What is the best way to protect biodiversity? Please make comments and uh, have a nice day. Thank you for your attention.